All right, I believe we are officially live. Hello, Artie peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. It's officially October. I don't know about you, but I am soaked for all of Halloween things, as you can probably tell, and inks. It's kind of the month for inks, you know, but uh, Jimmy Leslie here is with me, and he's going to be showing us amazing things, as always. But uh, I believe you also are going to be going over some cool mediums besides just the inks. We will, Emmy. Yep. New new inks and mediums from Liquitex. That's right. I'm so excited because I don't know a whole lot about the mediums that you guys offer. Okay. I am stoked to learn. Good. Now, in case anybody is interested in checking out the things that Jimmy has for us to check out, uh, go to the website jerrysartorama.com and type in the search bar, the today's class code, which is JL215. So JL215 and the teacher's cart should come up and you can check out all of the items that he's uh, going to be showing us today and you can uh, purchase it or check it out that way. So without further ado, I'm going to go hide and Jimmy, you can please take it away. Yeah, thanks so much, Emmy. I uh, appreciate being here. Uh, hey, everybody. My name is Jimmy Leslie. Um, as Emmy said, uh, there, there, yeah, I've joked on these uh, Jerry's lives before that the first time I did one, I thought the JL and the number was Jimmy Leslie. I, I really must have thought a whole lot of myself, uh, but it is Jerry's live. I'm Jimmy Leslie. Uh, I'm the resident artist for Liquitex and director of their education program here in North America, which is called the Fine Art Collective. Uh, like Emmy, I'm super stoked to be here tonight. We're going to talk about new inks new mediums. It's a lot to cover in an hour. So I want to show you something first on my overhead view. And that's a few social media channels here. So at TFACNA, the Fine Art Collective North America is our education program. The reason I bring this up is we have over 55 live streams, uh, hour long live streams archived there and also about 116, 117 mini demos now. And the reason I mention that is because each of the eight uh, mediums that I will mention tonight, we've done mini demos on each of them at TFACNA. So you can just scroll through there by hitting the IGTV icon and see those. So don't freak out if you feel like you've missed something tonight. This is also recorded as well. Uh, I'm Jimmy Leslie Art. That's where you can find me on Instagram. And uh, you can see a lot of things that I do with ink because I really do love it as a medium. Also, Liquitex Official. So the brand itself on Instagram. We've done live streams on uh, uh, the mediums. And actually, we have one coming up this week specifically just on uh, the inks, or rather next week. So just keep a lookout for that. And of course, Jerry's Artorama on Instagram Live. Uh, so that's kind of our uh, little bit of housekeeping there. And then I want to get right into it with color. So uh, actually, let me go back to the overhead view. And let's, let's open up this beautiful box that I have of Liquitex inks. I'm going to raise you guys up just a little bit. And we'll get a look at all 20 new colors. So we've got 20 new colors here. And those 20 new colors... Boy, we've got a lot of them we're going to go through. We've got bismuth yellow. We've got yellow deep. Um, now, one thing I want to show you right away, when I lift this up, that looks kind of clear, right? Now, don't worry about that. If you have ink, it's two things. Let's say you're shopping in a Jerry store and it looks like that on the shelf. Why, why is that? Well, it's because the pigment, the color particles, let me show you some pigment right here. This happens to be ultramarine blue. Right, so that look at that beautiful, beautiful powdered. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, he's got that woo look <laughs> on her face. There's That's a gorgeous, pretty. gorgeous color. Yeah, isn't it? So that is your your color element that is in your uh, Liquitex inks, uh, soft body, heavy body, and uh, acrylic gouache, and so on. And because the ink is very low viscosity, that means it's very thin. Those heavier pink particle uh, uh, pigment particles can settle to the bottom. So watch this, just a quick, and we're homogenized. There we go, it's like a little magic thing. And that is bismuth yellow. Let's do the same thing just with this one so you can see. So they'll just, they'll just settle because the pigment particles are heavier. So we've got yellow deep and a quick shake. Get that in focus, ah, there we are, we're all back. So it's no big deal if you see that. Um, don't freak out about that. Let's show you what I mean by low viscosity as well, because there's a little misconception. I think I'm going to choose one of my favorites in here, and we'll go through each color, but I'm going to choose this one called 
rubine red. So rubine red, like a, like, like from uh, a, the gem, a ruby, that kind of color. Let's put this out. And I'll, I'll be mixing some of this as well, but I'm gonna put some out here. I'm just gonna put it on this non-stick, you know, disposable palette. And I wanna do that with a little dropper to show you. And watch this when I tilt it. That's going, that's just, uh, it's like a little tilt-a-whirl thing. That's gonna go all over the place. So it's really thin. Now, the thing I wanna point out about this that's super, super important. And I feel, I feel like it's a misconception. A lot of times what people think is that the Liquitex soft body, which is more of a medium viscosity, it's thicker, and the heavy body, which is a very high viscosity, thicker still, right? Those are thicker still. So what they feel like a lot of times is that the ink or the soft body is a watered down version of the heavy body. That's not the case at all. When our chemists are working in the lab to create these, they're using an acrylic polymer that's thinner to make the soft body than the heavy body and thinner still to make the ink than the soft body. So it's still using the same professional quality pigments, still goes through light fastness testing, freeze thaw testing, stability testing for when things are shipped. So you don't have to worry about all of that. But you know, what, what is ink anyway? Because we're, we're talking about it. Let's go back to the overhead view. We're gonna do a lot of back and forth here so you can see things from above. You know, what is ink anyway? When I bring this back, some of our earliest forms of ink go back to carbon black. Now, carbon black is not one of our new colors. It's a, that's an old standby. But I'm going to put some down here anyway. And you can see just how deep and dark that black is. And carbon black is a common name for pigments from charring organic materials like wood. So it's a really deep, dark, dense black. And what I did is I, I wanted to make one for another demo I was doing. I wanted to make. Uh, actually carbon black. So I did that here in my studio. I, now I have a wood stove in the winter and I took a little Altoids box and I took some little wood chips, just wood chips from chopping wood. You can see already how I got that on here. And when my fire in my wood stove was down to embers and it was just hot in there, I closed up the Altoid box and I put this in there and it charred the wood and watch this. If we take this, I'll take a little piece of paper. This is just some uh, watercolor paper. Look at that, made some charcoal myself, homemade. Now, when I did that, what happens is when I close the box, it was devoid of oxygen. If I didn't close the box, the oxygen would just cause it to all burn up, right? Just like if you put wood in the fireplace. So the fact that it's in the, the little metal tin, uh, the little just a little Altoids box, it gave me this. Now. If you were to grind this up really, really fine, now really fine, right? It's, it's very hard to do on your own, but if you were to grind this up very, very fine and mix that with something like a Liquitex matte medium, you'd end up getting yourself a carbon black paint. It would be kind of gritty because we grind it up really, really super smooth in, in, our, uh, uh, in our labs when we make this, when we make paint, but um, just kind of a fun thing. If you ever want to do a homemade project, um, that's all you got to do, wood chips, Altoid box, put it on some burning embers and you can make your own charcoal. Uh, I like goofy things like that. I think it's a lot of fun uh, to play with. But let's go through each one of the colors. And I have, because we uh, don't have tons of time here tonight and there's a lot to cover, what we're gonna do is bring it back closer here. And I made some really nice swatches on watercolor paper. So I'm gonna get you a little tighter in here, everyone. So that's our bismuth yellow uh, right here. And bismuth yellow is a cool, cool yellow that's in the mix. Um, it's an iconic color known well from watercolor um, and it's bright, it's opaque, and I, I would call it a, a cooler lemon yellow. Uh, so we put that in there because we really didn't have something in the range that, that looked like that. And the next three are really important to, to, to point out to me because watch this, I'm gonna take my little uh, card with my social media handles. I'm gonna flip it over here uh, just to block things. now. If you saw Yellow Deep on its own and you didn't have that name, Yellow Deep, I'm pretty sure everybody would say it's orange. That, that's what it is, it's orange. But when we look at Yellow Deep, it is a rich, warm, uh, very transparent yellow. Uh, and it's, it's a, I like to call it sort of, I think we've called it like a sunset yellow. It's really bold and beautiful like that. But when we come next to it and look at Yellow Deep, or sorry, Yellow Orange, 
right? Now that move, that starts to move even more towards orange. And once again, I think if we had that on its own, clearly everybody would say orange, but it's not until we reveal bright orange that we really can kind of see the transitions there. And we can see that this is more yellow, hence the name yellow orange, and this is more yellow still. Of course, not like bismuth yellow. So what does this teach us? Regardless of whether we're looking at ink, and let me, let me go back to make this point because I, I think it's an important one. Uh, regardless of whether you're working with ink or soft body, heavy body, or oil paint or watercolor, color is relative, right? So that, that when we look at that yellow deep, it's going to look very orange until we have it next to the bismuth yellow or until we see it next to the true uh, straight on orange. So just kind of keep that in mind. Whenever you are working with color, I, it's important to see it next to the other colors that you're going to be using. You, you all know this in your own homes when you decorate too. If you've ever bought something, maybe an area rug, a throw rug, a blanket, or something that was going to be an accent and in, in store, you're like, oh, it's beautiful. You get it home next to something else and go, hmm, color's off. I don't like that, right? Color's relative. So just kind of little tip, tip of the day there. And I want to I want to mention this too. This was a conversation Emmy and I had before I show you more colors at the beginning. It's October. So if you're following me on social media, it's Inktober and there's prompts every day. And Emmy said to me, hey, Jimmy, are you doing Inktober? And I said, you know, Emmy, I love ink and I work with it a lot, almost daily in my sketchbook. But personally, I, I don't like to follow the prompts because it's a little restrictive for me. I, I kind of like to just do what I want to do on a given day. Now, and, and she said, you know, yeah, I feel like that sometimes too. And I said, I, I've talked to other people who sometimes feel that they're beating themselves up if they, if they join some sort of prompt and they don't do the challenge every day. Be kind to yourself, everybody. Art, it, even though art is work when we're trying to make good art, it should still be fun in the process. So those two are, are not mutually exclusive. Anyhow, let's jump ahead here. Uh, our other color we have after we get through the oranges is napfall red well, let me go back to the overhead here that's important is napfall red light so that's a really beautiful red and here's where we get relative as well because when we look at napfall red light and then we look at our next one is let's get that in focus perylene maroon which is sort of like a it's almost like a merlot color um perylene maroon don't 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 drink that with your pasta but it's sort of a it's sort of that color and then we've got the rubine red again so we've got our three reds and i want you to look at those together here when we look at napfall red light it's sort of a middle range red we start to get more of a maroon hence the name maroon so a deeper darker and then rubine red down here starts to get more of almost like a magenta Right. So they're 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 again something that you might just look on your own and say red, 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 but there's those distinctions when we get into it. Same thing here with purple and prism violet. They look very different. I'll I'll break some of these out and we'll use them wet. Uh, but purple is more of a true mid-range purple, whereas prism violet is one that when it's diluted, um, you get a multitude of shades and it's got more of an amethyst sort of feel. Uh, phthalo blue red shade, this is something we have in the Liquitex ranges and it's a, a deep staining blue that moves towards red. There are phthalo blue green shades that move more towards greenish. This moves more towards a red and we'll do a little mixing with that, I believe. Turquoise, ah. This is, this is a beauty. I, I'm, I got it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're getting big hearts there from Emmy. It's a beauty. We're going to break that out. Definitely. A uh, hooker's green hue permanent. Um, this is a really deep green name for the uh, 19th century English botanical painter, William Hooker. Oh, when I was a college professor and I told people to get hooker's green, I got giggles from the 18 year old boys in the class. It <laughs> has nothing to do with the oldest profession. It's, it, is, it is the botanical artist, William Hooker. Uh, and then we got sepia. Sepia is something I'm gonna show you tonight too. I wanna break out because it reminds me very much of old master drawings. It's a warm, or uh, warm orange, it's a warm brown that I love a lot. Uh, if you wanna get kind of funky, iridescent rose gold. That's a pretty one. And then we've got our fluorescent colors. We've got yellow, orange, red, pink, fluorescent blue, and green. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to try something here. Now, you're going to have to pardon me for one second because I have a black light. And the, the best way to show you these fluorescents is under a black light. So 
I'm gonna run across my studio and turn on the lights. So Emmy, entertain everybody. Talk amongst yourselves for one second. This will be fun. I think it'll be worth it. Well, I will say um, those colors are gorgeous and I cannot wait to see these fluorescent colors glow. I'm sure okay. everyone else here is very excited <laughs> as well. All right, I made it back, I made it back. Now I'm gonna turn off the rest of my lights around me here. We're getting kind of spooky. It's gonna to get totally dark. Hold on, hold on, I'm gonna disappear. I gotta make sure I can see everything too. All right, we're totally dark. And then uh, there we go. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. And you can see how those are reacting when we look at them compared to something like there's that iridescent rose gold, it's not fluorescent. So there, you know, it depends if I get too much light on it. Let me move this way. There you really get those colors to pop. You really get them to stand out. And you can see kind of like if you've ever been in black light yourself, how like the, you know, a white t-shirt or in this case, the white paper ends up looking very, very blue in that. But we get these really bold fluorescents. Now, what I'm going to do here is turn on my lights here first so I don't run across the studio <laughs> in the dark and you hear all sorts of terrible things as I crash. So one more second. I mean, keep them, keep them, uh, keep them happy. Please don't hurt yourself falling in the studio. That would not be good. I will say everyone is doing the ooh and the ah with <laughs> those fluorescents that are coming through. It okay, awesome. So, 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 well. so glad that worked. I was thinking of that before we went live. I'm like, okay, I gotta make sure I can get across the sea. Let me clear a path and make sure we're all good. Okay, so good. that's all those colors. I wanna, I wanna use them a bit, but what I'm gonna do is I wanna show you the mediums and then kind of introduce them, uh, the inks into uh, the mediums and we'll do that. Um, now, you, one of the things that, uh, because I'm conscious of time, let me go back to uh, saying to hi to everybody this way. Um, so, as I said, um, on uh, at TFACNA on Instagram and on Liquitex Official, I want you to keep a lookout because I will be doing a just a very specific ink episode, ink only and not the mediums on, I believe it's the 12th next week. The reason I call that out specifically is because I'll have a little bit more time since I won't be talking about mediums and I'll do a little um, kind of compare contrast between Liquitex, which is acrylic inks. I'll just mention one thing about this. So they're acrylic inks. That means it's an acrylic polymer just like the soft body, heavy body, acrylic wash, and so on, and pigments suspended in an acrylic polymer. Whereas what's also popular are alcohol inks. And those are often dyes in an alcohol base. And there's some different characteristics between the two that we don't have enough time to go into tonight. And I also wanna point out, it's not right or wrong, different. And I think that's something that Emmy does all the time with these lives is just tries to give you information so that you can take it experiment yourself and see what works for you. That, that's super, super important. I do wanna call this out though, uh, before I move on to the mediums, if I go back overhead. So when we look at the fluorescent colors, what's really important to keep in mind is these colors all up here, all here until we get to fluorescent, those are all pigment based. These are dye based. So why do I call that part out? Pigment versus dye, pigment versus dye. This is super, super important. So I really want you to take this away from you tonight. Um, a lot of times we've worked with artists. Sometimes, now inks, you know, you tend to work smaller, right? Of course, but we work with muralists a lot of times too with our soft body, heavy body paint. And sometimes our, our, my colleagues in the marketing department will put me in contact with the artist and I'll see their list of colors. And I'll say to the artist, see, you've got some fluorescent colors are you planning on using those outside? And they say, yeah. And I say, do you know they have dyes and they can, they can fade over time? And a lot of times they say, no, I have no idea. So I want you to think of this. I'm gonna give you a, a, a little analogy. So I want you, you're gonna, I'm gonna require you guys to, to, to you know, kind of visualize here. Think about a dye like being salt that you drop in a container of water. What happens? It dissolves and it becomes part of the water. Okay, now second glass, water again, but think of the pigment like dropping a rock in there, right? It's surrounded by the water, but it doesn't dissolve and become part of it. And the pigment by its nature is much more stable 
in contact with UV light. Uh, so the other things that I always, and many of my colleagues or, or anyone else who's seen me talk about these things before, they'll, they'll recognize this thing I'm gonna say. Um, your genes, your genes are dye-based, so they fade over time. That's not what you would wanna have happen with your artwork, um, your, your automobile, right? Uh, anything like that. Um, the other thing that fades, and we've all seen this before, uh, construction paper when little kids make drawings. Um, the house paint on your walls, when you go to remove a, a, a picture off the wall and you notice it's darker underneath, those things all start to, you know, can fade over time. A lot of times that's because something is dye-based and it's getting hit with UV light a lot. So if you're using fluorescent colors, I want you to keep that in mind and note that it's going to be better in situations where UV light is not hitting that. Um, it's going to be better for, you know, things where it's hanging in a way that's not getting, you know, pummeled by that. So just kind of keep that in mind. And again, if you go back over to uh, at TFACNA and look through our mini demos, I've specifically done little like three minute, five minute things and talked about that. But that being said, let me move this off to the side. I'm going to close our ink container up uh, for a minute. Actually, I'm going to take a few colors out. Uh, Rubine Red, I told you I wanted to show you. I specifically want to show you uh, Turquoise. Um, what else here? Oh, there's so many. There's so many sepia, sepia or sepia, however you want to say that. And I think I'm going to grab the yellow deep because like I said, it's sort of like sunshine in a bottle. So let's do that. And let's go back to our overhead. So we'll close this up. I've got those four colors out and I'm going to replace that with a box of medium. So we're doing a little unboxing tonight in both of these cases. So here, are eight um, new mediums. Sorry, Jim, before you jump yeah. into that, can you put that, uh, the piece of paper with all those tags on it again on the screen? I just wanna make sure that people know where to go to see those uh, oh. videos that you were just talking about. Absolutely, um, I can, absolutely, I can. It's, it's always easier for us to read it. Of um, course and it while is. you're grabbing that, I did have one quick question. Yeah, fire away. Um, the fluorescent inks, are they opaque enough on like black paper? Um, on black paper, I, you know, I would call them semi-opaque on black paper. And Emmy, it's a good, um, it's, a, it's a good question that you brought up here, um, really, because one of the things that we look, it, I, I say that it depends on, um, they're really, we, we list them as transparent. So if you did several layers, um, you, you, could, you could build up, uh, but, but on their own in a swatch, you're going to have transparent. So for anybody who's unfamiliar, um, we will put trans. We'll write it transparent. And when you see that square, so it's just that square, right? Let me show you one that is. Let me see if I have one handy that is opaque. Well, here's semi-opaque. So this is the rubine red. So semi-opaque looks like a diver down flag, ha half and half. And then opaque, it would of course say opaque, and it would be totally black, a totally black square. So yeah, good good question. Good one. Okay, so our our eight mediums that we have here, in no particular order, um, we have. Let's go to let's go to this one. We have satin medium. So like our gloss medium and matte medium, we have a satin medium, and this is satin fluid medium. So when we're talking about that, um, you could ask the question, and it would be a be a smart question and a logical one. Well, Jimmy, can I just take the Liquitex gloss medium and the matte medium, mix them together, and make a satin medium? Of course you can. You absolutely can do that. Here's my thing. As an artist, I've always been conscious of the value I get from my materials. And as a, as a former college art professor, I've always been conscious of the value and the money that my students have spent. So if you don't need a matte medium and you don't need a gloss medium, then don't buy two things to make the satin medium, just get the satin medium. And so for anybody who is using Liquitex products, your heavy body and soft body, um, they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna dry to a satin finish. So if you wanna maintain that satin finish, satin fluid medium. And now if you're the kind of person who uh, doesn't like to get more fluid, you, you instead you wanna get thicker, then, oops, where it is, there it is. Then we've got the satin gel. So satin fluid, satin gel. Let's take a look at those right here. And let me see if we can uh, get these in the light. So in the light here, we've got, uh, yeah, we've got the three differences. I think those show up. We've got matte up top. We've got satin in the middle. 
and then you can see gloss medium at the bottom. You can see just how different those three are right there. So again, if you're somebody, I, I tend to like a bit of a matte finish on a lot of my work because it's, it's easier to shoot photographs of. And then later on, I could put a satin or a gloss varnish. Some people like it from the get-go. Um, so it's really just an aesthetic choice. It's not a right or wrong. Let's show you something with that though. Uh, I did show you, I think I'm gonna get, um, Piece, another piece of paper out here uh, and we'll do, we'll do this. That's that one I had a little bit of charcoal. Um, I'm gonna reach, pardon me, and get my palette knife uh, and I'm gonna put out the gel. So it is gel, right? So we need a palette knife to get it out. And we put that on there. And I'm gonna take that. I think I'm gonna show you the, uh, show you the turquoise. I'm gonna make a little divot in that. And I'm going to take the, yeah, I'm going to take the turquoise because it's just such a, oh, it's such a gorgeous one. I'm kind of a sucker for this color anyway. Just, I don't know, just turquoise in general is beautiful. So it's very, very fluid, the ink. So here's what we do. If we drop it in here, drop a few dots in there. And I'm going to take my palette knife and mix this up. First of all, we're going to bring out the color. That should elicit an ooh. I wish I could hear people. That should elicit an ooh or ah. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a beautiful color. I love that color. Um, so here's what happens. When I've done that, I don't need to mix it all the way through. I could, but I'm just, just for the sake of time. What I've done here is I've made a thicker paint. I've taken the very, very high viscosity, the very, so viscosity, right? Viscosity, just, you know, fancy word for thick and thin, right? Uh, higher or lower viscosity. So we've taken something, so something really high viscosity just in daily life, water. Something really low viscosity, molasses, all right? Easy way to think of that. So when I have something, I like simple analogies and, and a lot of cooking and food ones work for, in the art world. But what I've essentially done here, if I take some, heavy body so here's liquidex heavy body right heavy body and and I, again value guys value I, I i want you to spend the money on, on on what you need for what you're doing in your in your practice so here's the heavy body right and we have a thick paint already like let's kind of we'll look at that from the side so you can see right the, the peak there the thickness right obviously i can shake that that's not going anywhere like the ink so that's very thick and what I've essentially done is I've made the ink more like heavy body. I've done that. So here's what you have to do, to do uh, as, as you know, or, or what you should kind of think about here. You should think about your own practice. And so if you're somebody who says, I really like ink, I really like the fluid motion of it. I, I like working with a dip pen and a brush. Ink is, yeah, that's my thing, right? Awesome. But once in a while, I like to get thicker with stuff. So let's say 95% more ink like you are and 5% you're like, yeah, I like that thickness there. I like that Van Gogh-esque thick impasto, right? So that's where your gel medium comes in to alter the consistency of what your medium does. So what do, this is always the thing I have to say, what do mediums do? They do three things. They change the sheen. So they can make something matte, gloss, or satin. They can change the viscosity, thickness, or thinness, fluid with the uh, satin fluid medium, thick with the gel. They can what? They, what kind of, they, oh, they can change drying time. And obviously, the thicker you get, the, the, the longer something, just like a thick cut of um, meat, the longer it's going to take to cook, the longer it's going to take to dry. Uh, it can also possibly add texture depending on which type of medium you use. So basically what your mediums do is customize your colors out of the jar or out of the tube, out of the, out, out of the, out of the packaging, right? So that's what's really important. Um, so when we go back to this overhead view here and we look at this again, um, could I make this heavy body, let's wipe off my, I, I always like to use a rag if I can, um, just because I can use the same thing forever and ever without, um, oh, awesome, thanks for the time check there, Emmy. Um, I'm gonna close up my, and here's one thing I do. I, I make sure I am totally, totally clean on the palette knife if I wanna go back in here so I don't infect everything there or, or uh, contaminate is a better word. So let me set that uh, gel off to the side. So heavy body here, what if I use satin medium? 
um, I can make this more fluid. But here's the thing. So I'm starting to make it more fluid, but watch, we're gonna put more in here. It is much easier to make the ink thicker than it is to make the already heavy body, the thick heavy body thinner. I have to use a lot more of the fluid. So see, you can see I'm making this more fluid, but it's nowhere near, look, it's still nowhere near like the ink if I shake this. So I would still have to keep going. And, and this guys, this, this wouldn't even be enough either. This is still not, so just kind of keep that concept in mind um, that it is much easier for you to make the ink thicker than taking the heavy body and make it thinner. So just think about what your starting point is. I think that's that's always key. What is your starting point? What is your aesthetic for the things that you wanna create? That's super important and start, start there. Okay, so let's, like I said, back and forth, back and forth, my face overhead, let's clean that off. So that's that's those, that's satin fluid map. And let me show you, uh, oh, we showed you that dry already. Let's show you next. Oh, here's the gel dry, just so you can see it. That was the fluid. And now we can see this with the matte gel. So matte gel up top, uh, satin in the middle, we get more of the sheen. You can see, just look how dead matte that matte gel is. I, I, I'm getting that in raking light. And this is a good view, this is a good angle. So you really get the difference between matte, satin, and the high gloss, high, high, high gloss. So again, not right or wrong aesthetic, your concepts. Emmy, you have a question. Yeah, we have actually, a question. while you're talking about the drying swatches, uh, when the, if the medium that you're using, like the one that you were showing us, is going to dry clear, um, mm. does that me, mean that that like turquoisey ink is going to get darker again? You, you're so your acrylics just like like watercolors a lot of time. Right? You know, uh, uh, they're the opposite. Watercolors sometimes dry a little bit lighter. Acrylics and tend to dry a little bit darker. So yes, although the medium is clear, it will tend to dry a little bit. So kind of think about that. Here's here's what I would do too. Um, so be, now that that matters or doesn't matter depending on who you are as an artist as well. Um, Sometimes that bothers people, sometimes it doesn't. But one of the things that you can do is put a swatch down of any acrylic color, let that dry, and then put another down wet so you can kind of see the difference. So that way you can know how to adjust a little bit. Um, same thing with drying rates. Uh, sometimes people ask me, well, how long will the acrylics take to dry? I don't know. I, I, can, say, I, can, I can definitely say, uh, you know, a thin layer, maybe three to five minutes dry to the touch. Something thicker, it could be as much as an hour. But I'm, I, you can't see it here, but on my studio wall, it's, it's, it's down there a bit. I've got a little thermostat. It gives me the temperature. It gives me uh, the humidity as well. Uh, so it's all about the atmosphere in your particular studio. And, you, you know, if you want to know what things are drying in your studio, it's kind of a goofy thing. <laughs> Just put wet paint down, write the time, write the, the temperature and the humidity, and every few minutes, touch it. <laughs> Simple as, if it's still wet, it's wet, right? And you'll, you'll get to a certain point where you'll, because, and I say that because we do have slow dry mediums. Those are already in the Liquitex line that will slow the drying rate down by about 40%. But that means nothing unless you have a, a starting point, right? So you need to know what that starting point is. And if you were to look and, you know, uh, I don't know, it took five minutes to, to dry, then you're, you know, you're probably going to get another minute and 45 out of that. If it takes 15, then you can do the math from there and go on. Um, so yeah, good, good question. All right. So I'm moving satin and medium out uh, and uh, gel out of the way. I think the fun one I want to show you next. Uh, yeah. I want to show you masking fluid. Cause I just, I think it's a really I think it's a fun one. I, I, mean, I, know, I know it's a fun one. I like it. And my daughter was using it last night and I'm going to show you what she did. Um, so let's go back overhead view. I cleared out a little space here. So let's go overhead view. So here is masking fluid. I'm going to take a little enamel palette that I have here. I'll get you guys down closer. Is and it important to use an enamel palette? Uh, no, not necessarily. You could, you could use a little plastic cup. You could, the, the enamel slicker so I can, I can peel it off of there easier. And I say that, Emmy, because this is latex based. I want you to know that in case you have a latex allergy. That's very important. It is latex based. So I'm going to put some here. Also, 
what it can do is gunk up your brush. So what I often do, and I think in my haste, I did not set this up tonight, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm just going to clean the brush off quickly, but here's what I'm going to do. Um, often what I will do, uh, yeah, I didn't put it here in my studio. Often what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of just um, a, a clear liquid soap, just, just liquid soap that you have inside your home. And I'll coat a little bit of the liquid soap on the brush. That way, when I dip into the masking fluid and later on, I go to clear off my brush, that little bit of soap is a barrier and everything comes off of there. If you just put the brush in here, which I'll do in a second, I'll, well, I'll do it. I'll do it right now. Let's let me grab, um, let me grab this uh, piece of paper I have here. You can see some masking fluid already dry on there. So you can see it when I tilt it in the light. If I go like that, it's a little harder to see, but you can still see it. And you can see it in this little sketch I have down here as well. You can see the masking fluid. So um, I can take it wet like this and put some on this surface. And you can see how that looks. So it doesn't dry clear, but you can still see it. Uh, but you can, it looks more white to begin with. And that'll take a few minutes. But I don't want to leave this on the brush. It will gunk it up. So I want to clean it off right away. And then what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of, oh, and this is what we should always do, and I didn't do. I don't have my cap on there. Don't do that. And yeah, you don't want things to dry out, but almost as important, if not more important, I don't want you to end up <sighs> knocking things all over and ruin everything that you're working on. Emmy, have you done that? You look like you- Yep, totally yeah. done that. I've also spilled it across my laptop. Sure. Oh, go. Oh. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, that's 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 yeah. Put your that's cast back on. That's not good. Well, we've all done it. Um, I, yeah. I will say this. One of the things you could do if you do have inks open sometimes, and I used to do this with students, uh, run some tape down and onto the surface. Just run it down like an L bracket and you can do that. So if you're working with the same color and you're going to be dipping into it, uh, kind of little tip that'll save your save things. So um, here I'm just going to put some over. Um, over this and we're gonna let that dry and then we'll we'll peel that up when it's dry and we'll be able to see where that was. Um, but what I will show you is a few examples. Um, here's something my daughter made last night. She's in a creative writing program in school. And uh, in that creative writing program, she had to write, uh, she wrote a collection of poems based upon space and time and uh, all these grand things around us up, up, up in the sky. So uh, what she did, she just took some watercolor paper, um, splattered the masking fluid on here, splattered it with the brush and let it dry. And then wet the paper a little bit. And I think in this one, this was her test piece. She did it, it was, it was for the cover of her collection of uh, poems, the, the front and back. So uh, here she used the turquoise and she dropped just a little bit of the rubine red and then peeled everything off. And I love how it just has, you know, you almost get like the Milky Way and you just get beautiful, beautiful things like that. Here's another one I did, which I was much more liberal with the splashing and splattering. So it's got, it, but it, even here though, it's still got that, kind of look and I imagine these could be things that you could fold over and almost make some sort of greeting card or you know fun I don't know maybe a tag in the holidays I, I, I don't know if you know if you like that sort of thing um this one was one where I covered it all with the uh fluorescent yellow first I'm not going to go turn off the lights but it would be cool <laughs> uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll, I'll do that when I do the uh the Liquitex live stream on this but it's all uh, of that and then I came uh then I put the uh then I splattered the masking fluid and then put my second uh, coat on and then peeled off, right? So uh, you can have a lot of fun with those things. Of course you can, you know, make random designs. And uh, of course you can do things. If I have time in the last few minutes, I will begin to sketch something out, but I have a, you can see I have a loose little sketch of a uh, motorcycle on there. And uh, I have, the line of the road is masked out right there. So we'll, we'll, we'll try to show you that if we, uh, if we get to that. But I got, I got a few more mediums to show you. So I'm gonna set this off to the side. But masking fluid, man, it's a, it's a fun one. I hope, you, I hope you play with it. And I, I like the splattering aspect because it's just, I don't know, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, let's look at, I know, let's look at glass medium. 
next. So glass medium, let me pull that out of my box of tricks here. Um, that's what it feels like when we have these things and I, I get to test these early on. It just feels like, you know, I don't know, like your art birthday all the time. So here's glass medium. Now with all these, they tell you information. So it tells you that it's gonna make something glossy. It tells you, you know this already because I explained it, it's gonna make something transparent, more transparent. And it's for effects. It's the, the gray labels that you'll see so let me let me go back here. The the green labels are the ones that indicate fluid mediums. The red labels that we've already saw indicate the gel and paste range of the or uh, section of the mediums, if you will. And then your uh, silver or gray, however you want to look at that, are the sort of special effects that that kind of thing. So. Let me take uh, another piece of paper out here, I'm running out of room on my surface here. I got a pretty good workspace, but when I do these things, especially when you have all this, you're like, man, do I run out of stuff. Now, this has the glass medium. Remember we were talking about viscosity. Look, that's got more of that molasses-like flow to it, all right? And I think, let's take, um, ooh, what color? Let's get a different one out of the box here. Let's, let's go with, uh, let's go with purple. Yeah, let's go, I think purple will be cool. Actually purple I used on this glass thing. So that kind of makes sense. Uh, that's not what I planned, but I'm gonna drop that in there. Drop that in. And you can actually see how thick that is because you can see it's kind of holding that, but do you see there's almost a, a little halo shadow around it. It's starting to seep into there but it kind of holds it. That's how thick that is. But uh, nonetheless, let's take our palette knife and mix that together. And this will bring out more of the purple. And I'm gonna slide it across here to bring out, yeah, bring out that rich, rich, deep purple color. So what, what's the deal with uh, glass medium? What's the, what's the situation with that? So sorry, let me move a few things out of the way here just because I don't want to knock anything over. Um, so here I have this, it's just a baby food jar. It's something that actually, quite frankly, held, I, I haven't had babies in a long, long time, <laughs> uh, but this held some nails in my basement uh, on the workbench. So I, I cleared it out just for the example. Um, when we look at this, uh, this is a situation where you want to mix in no more than 10% color to medium. 10% color to medium. Um, it's going to work best with your soft body or ink. Now, some of you might know if you've been fans of Liquitex products, um, you might remember we used to have a range called Glossies. And Glossies was specifically for painting on glass. And we discontinued those a number of years ago. And what we did is decided to come out with a glass medium. So you can make any of your soft body or ink colors glossies. You're not limited to what was just in that line. Anything will make the paint suitable for painting on glass. Now I say that because acrylics love, love, love to stick on a lot of surfaces. Fabric, you know, whether that's canvas, leather, uh, wood, concrete, blah, 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 anything porous, anything that's got a, a, a little bit of tooth to it, it loves. It doesn't like really slick surfaces a lot. So this is where gloss uh, or glass medium, glass medium, which is also glossy, comes into place. So let's go back uh, over top view. So what you do, and I think I've been telling people, it's a baby food jar, right? It doesn't look, it doesn't look all that pretty, but I think if you want to do a kind of cool craft thing, you know, hopefully this year with uh, Thanksgiving and the holiday season, uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, you're getting together with uh, a few close family members. I think it'd be pretty awesome if you took a votive glass, so a nice votive glass, painted that, put a little sand in it with a little votive candle, maybe put a little piece of twine or something cool around it, and you would make a little set of six that would be these glowing, beautiful little candles on there. Maybe they have a specific sign, uh, uh, or a uh, uh, symbol or some holiday thing. Maybe, it, maybe it's the Star of David for, for Hanukkah. Maybe it's a holly leaf. Maybe it's just color because color's color, right? Um, and here's what you want to do though. So you paint it on here and you let it dry. Then you can cure this in an oven at 300 Fahrenheit or 150 Celsius for 30 minutes. And then I can go like this and dig into it with my nail and it's not coming off of there. Yep. 
I was going to ask right. you how durable that is. Because uh, mm -hmm. the mom and me is wondering if that's dishwasher safe. Great question. Great question. The other question that goes with that, I'll answer that. The other question that goes with that is how about drinking out of it or anything like that? So what I like to say about that, what's important about that is um, don't put it in the dishwasher. The reason I say don't put it in the dishwasher, it would probably be fine, but other things clink and clunk around in there. So if you're doing it on some sort of drinking glass or, and, and again, uh, glass medium, but um, you know, ceramics, pottery, anything like that, um, you're just going to get more durability out of not having things clinking and clanking and food and all that kind of stuff on it. Now, the other thing people have said, if you were doing it on a wine glass, maybe that you wanted to gift to somebody, what about drinking out of that? Here's what I say about it. Do it below the lip line. Below, I, I've made up the term lip line. I don't know if that's a, but the lip line, right? The reason I say that is not because I'm concerned about it. Uh, I'm really, I, I, I honestly, if I drank out of that, got my lip on, I'm not concerned about it. Here's, here's the thing though. It is a paint that is for fine art use. It, it is not something, uh, it is not a, 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 we don't uh, register it as food safe with the FDA. And my concern is that maybe somebody drinks out of it and coincidentally has an allergic reaction to something else. All of a sudden now you think it's this and, and then now you've got a bigger task to decipher what's really going on. So I'm not freaked out about anything, but I always err on the side of caution. Just put a little below the lip line there and don't do that. Simple as that. And then hand wash. Um, so that's kind of your best uh, tactic. And because it's so, um, you know, viscous, right? Our, our fancy word for being thick, that way you can paint it on something and it won't just be dripping and sliding off. You can imagine if we just put ink on here on its own, it's just going to roll right off of it. It's never going to stick to it, right? So glass medium. Um, I'm going to show you. The next one I'm going to show you, let's see, I show you a uh, real quick. I'm going to show you my, uh, oh, I know, I know. I'm going to show you this one. Uh, this is silver and, uh, and gold metallic. So there's our, so this is silver medium. And if we get that in the light, you can just see how nice and shimmery that is. And we see that with the gold here as well. And I, you know, here I have it on black paper, so it's kind of nice to see it you know, shimmering on that. And actually when we do that, let's turn it this way. Yeah, look look how much that's reflecting the light there. It's reflecting it so much that we can't even see what that is. Uh, I, would, I would liken it to like a piece of aluminum foil. Uh, it's got that kind of reflective nature to it. Here it is with, and, and you can see it with quinacridone magenta. I flip it back this way. Now you can see some of the quinacridone magenta in it. So it's gonna tint that. And then we've got gold metallic medium. And when I tint it with the quinacridone magenta, it gets sort of a, 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 it's almost like the rose gold ink a little bit, really. It's, it's almost got that kind of flavor. Not, not exactly though, if I grab that, just, just for, let's grab it just for comparison, why not? I'm gonna put a drop down. Yeah, actually it's not. It's more of a burnt orange now that I think about it. See, this is why, right? What did I tell you? I started off telling you color is relative. So that's the perfect example of color being relative. I thought it did. It's not even close. I got a little bubble in there. Let me shake that. Not that it matters, but yeah, that's not even close. That's not even, that's not even in the ballpark. And you know what? I've been doing this a long time taught a lot of college students. I like to, I'd be honest with you, I like to think my eyes on target, <laughs> but that's how much it's off. Um, but anyway, no, nonetheless, that's just a nice little illustration that, and, that, and a nice example of when you uh, do things, uh, why it is also, uh, always nice to compare. Um, so because I, I'm on, uh, you know, aware of time and there's some other things I wanna show you, I'm not gonna break those out wet because really it, the, the, the beauty is showing them to you dry like this. Uh, I will say, better off to mix, and this is why you've seen it on the label, better off to mix with a transparent color, more of that color will come through. All right, so just something to keep in mind there. Um, I wanna show you, so we've got two more, I think two more to show you. Yes, we have silk screen. Yep, okay, good, thank you for that time check. We've got silk screen and we also have a crackle medium. And I don't wanna miss that, so. Pardon me while I move this over to the side. Sorry, what's that, Emmy? 
That crackle medium is super fun. Yeah, it's a funky think, though. It's a funky one for sure. Okay, so we're gonna take, so even more like molasses, let me make sure that that is cleaned off my palate nice, so pardon while I reach to the side here. I got, I got stuff everywhere here, so I gotta make sure that's cleaned off so I don't get this all contaminated. Okay, so our silk screen medium, let me put a little out and you can see sort of the rheology of that, the rheology that that sort of sticky feeling it's got. And I'll put some more down in a pile here and I'll, I'll mix a little color. Let's mix, um, did we do something with a rubine red? I think we did, but that's all right. It doesn't matter. It's such a gorgeous, no, I don't think we did actually. That's a gorgeous color. I think I put it out on its, on its own. Um, yeah, oh, that's a bold, that's a bold color. And I'm gonna, just while I'm here, not that I would mix these two things together, I, I, I wouldn't, they serve different purposes, uh, but just for the sake of, uh, just to show you something color-wise, I'm gonna take a little of the silk screen medium and a little of that turquoise and mix that together just to show you the beauty of the turquoise and the rubine red together. It's its own beautiful, own beautiful violet purple color. But this is glass medium, uh, sorry, sorry, silk screen medium right here. Now, for anyone who is unaware, let's go back this way. Anyone who's unaware, um, what what is, what is silk screen? Uh, silk screening. Silk screening is just it's another name for screen printing, or how you might do something like this: put a logo on a T-shirt. But it can also be used for art purposes. So what you do is you have a silk screen. It doesn't actually have to be silk. There's other varieties of it today, but originally it was silk. Uh, there's other synthetic versions now. And what happens is you have an image, and an area is masked off, like like with the masking fluid, but it's masked off, and the area that is not masked off, like if this logo on my shirt was this part wasn't masked off and everything you see is black around it was, you would put an ink through that and put it through the silk screen onto the t-shirt or onto a piece of printing paper and a uh, print paper and make your image. Now, I'm not a silk screener, I'm not a screen printer. So I'm gonna show you some, and it's also, it's also quite a big involved thing to do that is a much bigger topic than this. So I'm gonna show you something here. Uh, another way that I think is fun to use it. So I made, and I, and I think this is an easy thing to do. Uh, and it's also something that I like it because you can do it with kids. So you can make what's called a collagraph. So a collagraph is super simple. This is just a piece of cardboard. We all have this from the million and one things we've ordered via mail in the last year and a half. Uh, so you've got plenty of packing material, great way to reuse things. I just happen to use pennies here. Um, the thing is you wanna use anything that's roughly about the same height. So you could, um, you could do a project with kids or a class if you're, a, if you're an art teacher yourself, and you could say, um, let's gather all things that we find outside. And they all wanna be roughly the same thickness. And so when we do that, now you can imagine if I just put the ink on here, it would roll right off the surface. So what you do when you add the ink or, or the soft body, uh, if you add that to your uh, silk screen medium, this has almost an oily like consistency. It's not oil, it's water-based. It is acrylic, just like everything in the Liquitex range, but it's got more of an oily feel to it. And then what I do is I simply, I could use a roller or, or what's called a brayer and I could roll it on or I could brush it on. And then here's two prints I made from this. So one here, uh, I made it and I left everything a little thicker so you can almost see these little rivulets. Uh, in this, but you can start to make out parts of the penny. In this one, I changed up the color a little bit and it depends on the pressure that you put on it as well. You can see in some areas here, you start to see more of the relief of the penny. Now remember, pennies are low relief, right? So it, you know, it, it depends on how much something sticks up from the surface. Um, here where I've pressed down a lot more, you really kind of lose the image of it. I, I liked in doing this that it has a very kind of aged look like the pennies themselves. And actually it kind of has the feeling of 
the old pennies, the copper ones that if you every once in a while, if you find those, they're kind of hard to find anymore, but they actually have this color. So I was thinking about that uh, when I mixed that color on there. Um, also neat to do too, because you might do something with a holograph in the holidays coming up. Maybe you want to send cards out for Christmas or Hanukkah and you want to do a little design. You can do that. Boom, print, boom, print. You can put this down and simply use your hand. And if you do that, depending on how much you put on there, everyone will be a little bit different. So you can give the design to everybody, but everything will be a little bit different. Finally, let me show you the crackle paste. So crackle paste is, I need to move this again, pardon me while I get all this out of my way. Uh, I'll bring out the crackle paste and that one, and again, make sure my palette knife is cleaned off um, this this actually looks if you didn't know it looks like i'm pulling out the satin the satin medium right so all of, all of this stuff and this is why it's good to have things it's, it's great that jerry's does these things with so many different art manufacturers so you can learn about these things because quite frankly if you just opened it up you'd be like, i don't know same thing How, what that is the same thing and it's not the the magic is in what the chemists do and i feel so fortunate to, to be able to work with our chemists when i say work with our chemists they do the heavy lifting and i get to test things and 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 pick their brains um so i want to be fair when i say work with him i am not in the lab with goggles and and uh, i've been there and i've visited but I, I am not in there concocting things so when i take the crackle paste and i put that down a few things that are important with this what you can add color to i'll add um i'm gonna add sepia to it I told you i wanted to show you that sepia sepia looks looks black right there right let me bring you down there looks looks black totally totally looks black like that and i'm gonna mix it up And now you get more of that warm brown tone that comes out of there. And I'll show you a sepia drawing in just a second. Then you get that out of there. Now, what happens with the crackle paste is that you get a faux finish out of that. So I'm gonna raise you up here. Free beer here tonight in Jimmy's studio. Um, you know, <laughs> Emmy's in. Now, I here we go. This is just a piece of Luan. It's just, I had it from some scrap project. I don't even know what in my studio I had it. And uh, to illustrate things, I also, I, I like to, if I'm going to do something for demos, I like to do something that can be fun for other things. And, um, you know, uh, I had some friends uh, and family, a few, a uh, few close people over who were all vaccinated and we were safe. So I put this, now I wouldn't charge my friends and family anyway, but I put this near the old tin, you know, the old galvanized tub I had. And if I bring you down close, and we'll get you tight in here, you can see all the little crackles in it. Now, what I did, and this is important, you want to mix no more than 15% color to crackle paste. 15% color to crackle paste. Why? And this is super, super important, guys. The reason you want to do that is because normally we do not want our paint to crackle. I do not want to make any painting that you see behind me here, sell it to somebody and have it crack. That's big, 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 big. No, don't want to do that. Obvious reasons. I don't need to explain that anymore. So our chemists, when they make this, have to do a tightrope dance or balancing act a little bit. They need to play with the amount of binder in there enough to get it to crack, but not crack so much that it won't be stable because we want this to be stable on here. We just want the cracking to be surface cracking that shows, but not fall off. So here's what you have to remember. No more than 10% color to the crackle base because the color itself has acrylic binder in it, right? That's what makes it stick to the surface. So you're adding more binder to it. That's why you only wanna go that 15%. That Here's the other thing you wanna do. You wanna make sure that you put it down in a thickness that's about five to 10 millimeters thick. That's gonna be optimum for getting this to, to, uh, to, to crack. And the third thing, so there's three things. The third thing this is gonna take overnight. This is gonna take you know probably 24 hours. Do not force dry it. 
Don't hit it with a heat gun, a hair dryer. Don't stick it next to a radiator, a fireplace. Don't do anything like that. I'll show you exactly what I did with this though. So, um, I, so I took a little bit of unbleached uh, titanium is what I use because I wanted to, I didn't want it to look white. I wanted it to look like, you know, an aged kind of dirty old sign. So I did that. Um, and then once that all dried, I left on here so you could see, you can still see some lines that I put um, as I, you know, put where I wanted to have the letters. I could easily erase these still, but I drew uh, with pencil lines. And then I used actually a lip, uh, what did I do here? I used a quinacridone magenta with a Liquitex fluid matte medium. And I thinned it out quite a bit with the matte medium because I didn't want the red to be super, super bold because, so I thinned it out so much that you can still see some cracks coming. Well, not only can you see cracks coming through it, but you can see where I didn't even cover areas. So I, I it was very, very thin. And then the drop shadow in black. And if I get it in the light, you can see it up here, the shimmery gold. Those are both uh, Liquitex acrylic paint markers. So I did the drop shadow in black and gold. And then I get this. So those are your three. Again, let me, let me restate those as a recap for that. Your three things. No more than 15% uh, color to medium. Make sure five millimeter to 10 millimeter thick and let it dry overnight, no force drying. Um, I mean, I know we're at 632. Um, mm -hmm. Fire away if we have any questions as we finish up. And I'm what I'm gonna do if, uh, hopefully you do have questions and I, I welcome them. Uh, and while you do that, I'm going to, just for our last few minutes together, I'm gonna move this back in and go overhead. And I'm gonna peel off my masking fluid I'm actually going to remind you to peel those off <laughs> ah, good, 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 that's good. The stuff that i always forget to do on the show <laughs> now my fingers are my fingers are dirty i i i, I wouldn't do it with dirty fingers but i'm not going to go clean up now for this because obviously you're rubbing it on here um you can also use like a little pickup eraser or but you can see it comes off really easily and once it comes off like that you get this little oh you can oh okay so that's interesting i that was a mistake but that little bit that I peeled off, it, it, I, I mistakenly got it on there and, and it, want, it wants to grab to that. They so look at how that, each other really they want well. to stick to each other. So once you have one there, then I can put this right there. Nope, that one didn't attach. Ah, see, I wanted it to attach and it didn't. Um, it might so be the can, paint that didn't get it to stick. Yeah, there you go. So you can get this barrier a little bit. Yep. So you can get this really you know, nice clean areas that you want. And then you can still go back over top of that. And um, yeah, fire away if you have questions. What I'm gonna do, this is a dip pen. This is actually, you'll, you'll find little nibs that go in. Some are called crow quill. This is called a hawk quill. And this one is um, quite stiff. So I don't know if you, you won't be able to see this that easily, but I'm gonna push on here. The end, the end has a split in it. Yeah, you really can't see it. It's so tiny, but it has a, a split in it. And uh, nibs that are a softer metal will split apart more and let more ink out. And that can be a little harder to control for somebody. This is, we don't make these at Liquitex. This is actually, and I think you guys sell these. I mean, this is actually a speedball uh, mm -hmm. nib. And this is the, um, this, I think I jotted it down. Yeah, this is the Hawk Quill uh, 107. And so you can see if I take um, my, I'm gonna take my sepia ink and I'm just gonna dip, I'm gonna raise this up. Now, I, 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 liked, I like to just jump in with ink a lot. Um, I, I had a college professor who made us keep a sketchbook. And oftentimes as artists, we don't like to be made to do things, um, but I'm so glad he did because um, Ink has become forever a part of my life because of this professor, and um, and keeping sketchbooks has forever been a part of my practice. And I always think of ink and sketchbooks as being daily exercise. It's like getting up and working out. And uh, you know, if you do that and you get up and work out, right? Um, let's say you were going to run. Um, what you what you wouldn't do is just go out for the first time and run uh, 10 miles because the next day you would be in. Well, you could do that, but I 
I wouldn't recommend it. You'd be in quite horrible pain. Um, you, what you do is you build up over time and you have cumulative results from doing a little bit every day. And so that practice of this professor who got me to work with ink and work in a sketchbook has really stuck with me. And it's something that how I build and still build uh, skills over time. Um, so, you know, I can use this, get really fine lines with this. And um, I wish I had more time to go into it more, but you can start to get the idea. And then what I could do here is um, I'm going to dip into, I'm going to put a little bit of my ink in the uh, in this enamel palette right here. And I've got a shadow that's under here and actually the tighter itself. You know, when I'm working in a sketchbook, I'm really free. I can go right over that line there that I would peel up later on. And I could leave an area maybe where there's some light hitting right there. Uh, I can be really free with this too and come back in with the pen and firm up things that are happening in here. Maybe a little dry so brush with light. To watch a washes going down on a, a sketch like this. I can watch yeah, it. <laughs> it's really fun. And and actually, if you guys um if you do visit later on here, this in the past week, I think I've done two or three uh time lapses with a little bit of voiceovers. So you can see me creating stuff like this. I think I did a portrait. Um, so you can you can certainly go uh, check that out. But I'll show you something, uh, just two things dried. And, um, you know, I, I like drawing, uh, you know, something like a cat is great. This You can obviously tell this is a quick sketch. And I think ink scares people sometimes because you know, they feel like, oh, I can't erase, I can't erase. But first of all, when I work in my sketchbook, I'm working to, like I said, build those aesthetic muscles, you know, uh, and, and so... I don't care about these extraneous lines. Uh, and, and, you know, here's another one, just kind of getting the cat laying there on the floor, who, whose name happens to be Inky, um, which is kind of fun. And here's another little, you know, here's just pages. There's another little cat and, you know, pages of working with the ink in a sketchbook, building skills uh, daily. Um, another little one kind of on a, similar theme there, but I was on a little kind of motorcycle camping trip with my brother this, this past summer. Uh, and I'll show you two or three more here. This, this was just, I went on a walk one very early morning. Matter of fact, you can actually, it wasn't as early as I thought. It was 7.45 AM Friday, August 13th. And this was looking down uh, this, I think that's actually when I drew it, this was earlier in the morning and there was just, uh, it was dawn out. Oh yeah. Cause it says up here, 5.17 a.m. I was out and it was very, very deep shadows on the street. So you can just see me using hatching marks to get those uh, shadows. And then, um, you know, stuff like this that I'll do in the sketchbook, um, sometimes little self portraits. I'll, I'll also flick paint a lot too. I, I like the little, you know, things that might be I don't know, give a sense of energy. So those are things sometimes where people think within, oh no, you don't wanna, oh, what if you, you splattered? Oh no, you got something where you didn't want it. I, I think there's an energy to stuff like that that I find uh, interesting. Yeah, this one I definitely did a time-lapse of. It's So it's like a little 20 minute um, little video of that. And, uh, and I'll show you one last one that I hope will give you a little bit of inspiration to go out and make your, um, make your own stuff. This was uh, also on that same camping trip with my brother. So you can see I have, it's like my little sort of journal there where I'm, I'm writing about this little cabin that we stayed up in, in the Adirondacks. And this is that same sepia ink. And I really looked at it as a value study. And then I, uh, I came back in with a few other colors to get the fire and a light that was outside the cabin. And this, this serves as a study for a painting that I, that I've made. So you know, again, I think ink is just something that I, I don't know, I love it. Uh, it it's, it's something that I, you shouldn't be scared of because you can't erase. You should embrace the splatters and the, the all that, all that, there's my sound effects, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But embrace it's, the it's chaos. lovely though, how versatile it is with all these additions of medium. So you can yeah. continue to do the crazy splatter and just traditional ink work. And then you can also, if you have a wild hair one day, you can go yeah. make an impasto painting using just the medium and the range of colors that you are very used to already.
Yeah, to totally. I mean, that's a great way to put it. Yeah. So if you so if you have the inks, but you just have that, you know, you have a gel medium and yeah. And one day you want to do that, you can transform all your inks into almost almost heavy body paints. Um, so I, I think the versatility is kind of cool. And again, that means you don't have to buy a whole other line of paints because it would be crazy. It would be crazy to say to you, oh, you like ink. And again, as I started out, 95% of the time you love to work with ink, but once in a while you want to make a thicker painting. Oh, wait, so I, there's 12 colors I want and I have to buy 12 totally different things. No, get some mediums, shake it up and try that. that and that could be a nice entry in. And then if you do that and you do finally say, you know what, I actually really want to get into making a lot of thicker paintings and stuff like that, then maybe you do eventually get into that, but you don't feel like you have to make a whole switch in the range from the ink to the heavy body. There, what, what mediums will give you is versatility. They will customize your paints. And that, that's an important thing to walk away uh, from this tonight. Yeah, definitely. Uh, no, we did have one quick question uh, that yeah. I meant to ask you earlier and I forgot. Uh, ink, can you mix it in with just the standard gesso and make a tinted like primer for your canvas? Totally, totally can that's do that. Fantastic. Totally can do that. And because everything's based on acrylic polymers, if you are doing stuff with Liquitex soft body and, you know, and, and the opposite way, because that's mostly what you do, and you have a stray bottle of uh, the turquoise, you can mix that in with the soft body paints, with the heavy body paints, with uh, mix and match any, any which way you want. So yeah, you, you got a lot of freedom there. A mad scientist like that. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you need a lab coat. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but that is all of the questions that I can see for right now. Uh, everybody though, if we did miss any questions and let me pop me back in here. There we go. You found me. Ha -ha. <laughs> uh, if you did uh, have a question about uh, what you saw on this demo or anything, you know, ink related, uh, you guys absolutely can put your questions in the comments below. Um, you know, Jimmy and I will go back through and make sure that we yeah. answer all of them. Uh, I usually go back through and answer all of them anyway, the ones that we've even discussed throughout the show, just so you have it in writing, something to reference. Uh, and, you know, if you have the same questions, you can go back through and read it. Uh, but if you uh, do anything ink related, which I mean, of course, it's October, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's the month of ink, I swear. Uh, make sure you guys uh, join the Jerry's Live Facebook group. Jimmy is officially now a member of our group. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope to see his artwork uh, being posted in there as well. But um, it is just a, a huge array of artists all, from all over the place, you know, international. There's over 6,000 of us. We just kind of come together and promote each other. It's Jerry's Live Facebook group. So if you do want to join, make sure you answer the one security question. Otherwise, you are technically deemed a robot and I'm not allowed to let you in. Sorry. But uh, maybe one day, uh, <laughs> but if you do anything ink related or, you know, testing out any of the things that uh, Jimmy was uh, showing us here, make sure you post that and also use the hashtag uh, for the class code, the, uh, I wrote it down here, 215, JL215, hashtag JL215. So that way we can search it and we should be able to find um, your, your artwork and be able to reference it that way. But that was the show. It was such a wonderful demo, Jimmy. Thank you so much oh. for being on here. No, thank As, you. Thank you. It's, it's my pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it immensely. I appreciate you guys. And uh, yeah, all you guys out there, just, you know, be easy on yourself. Go out, have fun. We, we, we are working when we're artists and we're making art. We're, we're working, but it's fun too. So don't beat yourself up. I want you to make sure you walk away with that in mind. And yes. uh, be safe, be creative, guys. Definitely. We'll see you next time. See Cheers. Ya.